Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video is going to be my makeup monthly for the month of September. If you are new to my makeup monthlies, it's basically just like a monthly wrap up. I talk about my favorites, I talk about the products that failed me, I also talk, pro talk about products that I thought were just fine. I'm also a published author and book blogger, so typically at the end of these videos, I either do some book shout outs or I give an update on my next novel, and that's what today's video is going to be. I don't have any book favorites this month, but I have some exciting news about my seventh novel that is about to be published. So. I always have a lot to chat about in these videos, so why don't we go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start off with the fail category. So the first one is a product that I reviewed here recently and I said I was going to return it. I did end up returning it. This was from Becca Cosmetics and it was their uh, Ultimate Concealer, Ultimate Coverage Concealer. I did not like that at all. I picked that up recently from Sephora and I was trying it out a few times, really trying to make it work for me because I've heard kind of conflicting things about it, but a lot of people that I really like said that they really enjoyed the concealer, so I thought I would give it a chance. I love trying out concealer and this one just failed me miserably. So actually the day before I'm filming this, I went ahead and returned it to Sephora and then made another Sephora order. <laughs> How does that work? Uh, a Sephora haul will be coming up, don't you worry. Uh, but this one just really did not work out for me. I did like the coverage on it, but unfortunately when I applied it, it truly felt like, I was trying to explain in my review video, I was like, it felt sticky. Like the wand was like sticking to my skin and someone goes, it sounds like you're trying to describe you're applying lip gloss to your face. And I was like, yes. That's what it feels like. It felt like I was truly taking a lip gloss, a lip gloss wand and trying to apply concealer with it. It was the most bizarre thing. I really couldn't get past that or how hard it was for me to blend out. I mean, at the end, I liked the coverage. I liked the way it looked, but it was just too hard to get there. And I knew that I would very rarely reach for that concealer. So I went ahead and kicked that one out of my collection. So next up, I want to talk about a lip product here. This is from Pixie Beauty, and I usually love their skincare. I think I enjoy Pixie skincare more than I like their makeup. They just have some really great products, but unfortunately, this one was a huge miss for me, and it took me a bit to figure out that this product was doing something really terrible to my lips. This is their Nourishing Lip Polish. It says that it's a gentle lip scrub. So it looks like this, and then when you open it up, you just squeeze the product, and I don't know if you'd be able to tell on camera since it's clear, but it has like those little like grooves in there, so when you apply it, it feels really nice. You know, it really does feel like you're kind of exfoliating your lips and giving them like a nice little scrub. I realized about this product though that it truly shrivels my lips. Now I deal with dry lips enough. I've talked about my dry lips. I finally went ahead and made a purchase for something that will hopefully help my dry lips coming soon in my Sephora haul. Uh, so I talk about my dry lips a lot. I try a lot of different items on them, exfoliators, lip scrubs, etc. Uh, my favorite kind of like lip balm at this moment is the Kapari Lip Glossy. I took that with me on my Vegas trip because I love it so much. I definitely knew I'm going to the desert. I want to make sure I have one of my favorite lip balms with me. And when I got home, I had yet to unpack all of my bags. I still had my skincare bag uh, not unpacked yet. And I was like, oh no, I need a lip gloss. I need a, you know, a lip balm, something on my lips. And this was in my bathroom drawer. And I was like, great, go, I'll just go ahead and use this. So I used it one day, then I used it at night, then I used it the next morning. And I was like, why are are my lips getting worse I don't understand what's happening seriously shriveled shriveled my lips and I know it's this because I was using no other lip product at that time and yes my lips were dry in Vegas but they were not anything to actually shriveling shriveling shrivel lips like it was just not cute and I've used this in the past before but only kind of like a few times here and there but I've noticed in the past too like I would get that shriveled lip feelings and it's it's this guy. It's this guy. No, no. I'm kicking that out of my collection too because, oh my goodness, my poor lips. But it's like the minute I stop using it and switch to something else, my lips are fine again. It's crazy. Okay, so I just have one more product left. This was such a weird one. Okay, this is from Bosha. This is the Charcoal Deep Pore Exfoliating Peel Gel with Volcanic Sand. I get a really nice PR package from Bosha. I have a couple products that I appear to be liking. I'm going to keep trying them out a few more times and you'll probably see them in next month's makeup monthly. Uh, but this one, I put it on the first night and I was like, what it just happened to my skin? So you pump it out like this. Uh, it says it's a lightweight peeling gel powered by black charcoal. It's supposed to work as a physical exfoliant and a chemical peel to deeply purify pores by removing dirt, oil, and dead skin cells. When I put this on and start to rub it in, it's almost like it doesn't really have a lot of a base to it. Like you don't really see like you're, it's not like you're putting on like a black mask or anything. So there's not much of a like color base to it, but you get little black dots, like 
like little black dots all around your skin and I was putting it on and I was like oh okay like not quite what I was expecting but like I'm gonna keep rolling with it it's fine it was a, it was slightly painful I do have sensitive skin so sometimes certain peels gels uh, exfoliators scrubs things like that you sometimes they can bother my sensitive skin a little bit but I'm rubbing it in like oh, okay but then I noticed even after I tried to take it off so I have I have hair on my face I don't know if that's like a really weird thing in the beauty community, but I have hair on my face. And those, those little black scrubs, whatever that was, was sticking to the hair on my face for the entire day. I couldn't get it off. I was literally taking my nails and trying to like, uh, these things off my face. I was like, no, what is this? So it was especially sticking along here and then up here by my forehead. I mean, I looked kind of crazy because I couldn't get these things off my face so I don't know I didn't appreciate that if you are someone who does remove like all of the hair from your face maybe you will not have that problem if you do have sensitive skin I would say that this would probably be too much for you because I could immediately tell like this is a little much for me but honestly just that I couldn't actually remove all of the product that was a really weird part to me. So unfortunately, this one was a no-go for me either. So next up, I'm gonna move over to my fine category. Again, I like to include this category because a lot of times there are products that I do like. I would just be lying if I said that they were an absolute favorite of mine, but I still like them enough to be able to recommend them to certain people, you know what I'm saying? So first up, I have this here from Too Faced. This is the Hangover 3-in-1 Replenishing Primer and Setting Spray. I did get this sent to me in a PR package from Too Faced. So this is their spray kind. They also do have, um, you know, the regular, it kind of feels very like a gel primer, the, the regular Hangover RX primer. I've tried that one. I didn't like dislike it, but I don't even know if I would put it in like my fine category. Like I just, I don't know. Like it was fine, but it was nothing to write home about kind of thing. This one I like even more, but again, and like I want to recommend it, but again, I, I just can't be like, this is my absolute favorite. You guys must have this, but I think it's pretty darn good and I enjoy using it. I actually like using it as a primer spray and I also enjoy using it as a setting spray. I almost think I like it as a primer spray a little bit more. A lot of primer sprays, I don't feel like I'm really getting a lot of benefits of an actual primer, but this one, it's almost like... It's almost like the spray, I don't know if I want to say like thicker, but I just feel like I'm getting a little something something when I apply it before I apply my makeup, so I appreciate that. I do like the way that it smells. It has a bit of a coconut scent to it, but nothing like too overpowering, especially when I spray it. Um, I, I didn't notice it being it too it being too overwhelming but again I really like it as my primer spray and then I also like it as a setting spray so I've been liking this one I've been finding myself reaching for it more and more so that's kind of how I know I like it it's just not like I don't feel like you absolutely have to go run out and get it if that makes sense and then I just have one other product for my fine category this is a mascara this is from Essence this is the Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara my friend Candace sent this to me she said it was her favorite mascara I know so many people that this is their absolute favorite mascara. Now, I really, really like this mascara. I just have one issue with it, and it's the it's the only issue that I have with the other Essence mascara that I've tried. That is the False Effects mascara. It has like the orange. It's white with orange coloring. The only issue that I have with the Essence mascaras is that they transfer a lot. I really like this one. I like the other one that I mentioned. I think it does, this one particularly, I think it does really nice things for really lengthening, lengthening the lashes. It gives some nice volume in there too. It makes my lashes nice and black. It separates them, like everything, like tick, 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 tick. And then I wear it for an hour and I have mascara underneath my lashes. And I'm like, no, like on my face. You know what I'm saying. And I'm like, no, why is this happening? So, and sometimes I'll get it up above here too, like in my eyeshadow. And I'm like, shoot, because when I first applied it, I was like, yes, this is why everyone loves this mascara. I'm going to love this mascara too. And I really do like it, except I do have a bit of transfer issues. So what I've been kind of finding with, with mascaras that I have the transfer issues with, I typically just wear them on my top lashes and I'll wear something else for my bottom lashes because definitely my bottom lashes is the first to have mascara transfer onto my face. Um, but I would love to know if you guys have any other tips too because I mean there's so many mascaras that have that transfer issue. What do you guys do to try to prevent that? I don't know. Like I, I've seen people put translucent powder on like while actually applying the mascara. That way if you, you know, you miss or you go too far and you get mascara on your face, you can dust it away with the powder. But how do you, I don't know what to do to make your mascara not transfer. 
That's the only issue I have with this one. Otherwise, it's so, so good. Otherwise, if I didn't have that issue, it probably would be my favorites because this is a really nice mascara. It's really affordable. I just wish it wouldn't get on my face. Alrighty, so I forgot to mention in the intro too that in my makeup monthlies, I always do a channel shout out. I've been doing it for probably a year now. Uh, I just shout out another YouTube creator, say you know why I like their channel, encourage you guys to go check them out. It's one of my favorite parts of my makeup monthly. I love doing these kinds of videos. Uh, I love the idea of community over competition and I just think the makeup monthly, like a big roundup, I think it's a great way to spotlight a creator. So this month I am spotlighting Jenna Freeze. Now I did mention Jenna in my five under 5k video I recently posted that one I'll have it linked down below if you haven't checked it out I hope that you will I just spotlighted at five different creators under or right around the 5,000 subscriber mark I did this uh, a couple months back I did eight under 8k uh, a lot of you guys said you wanted to see a big roundup as well so I'm gonna get that on my my filming schedule and film just like a big old video not caring about numbers but just all the different channels that I love to watch from like 100 subscribers to a million subscribers uh, I will go ahead and get that on my schedule but I mentioned Jenna in that video because she's some somewhat of a newer channel to me probably the past couple months here I've been watching her but her videos are so good and she has such great informational videos uh, she gets a lot of the newer products and she reviews them right away which is so helpful to me because there's a lot of times there's new products that I'm like I really want to buy that but I don't know if I want to spend the money on it. And then all these great people are putting out their reviews. And I'm like, yay, thank you. And Jenna's like always one of the first ones too to have her review videos up. She does focus her channel on high end and luxury makeup. So if that's kind of like your sweet spot with makeup, that's what you really like, or those are the reviews that you like to get, I would highly suggest checking out her channel. Um, but just like personality wise, she's someone, like I said in my, in my 5K video, she's someone who I just feel like I could be friends with. And that's something that I really look for when I'm finding other YouTube creators to watch. I definitely suggest checking out Jenna's channel channel. Uh, the way that I choose my creator that I'm featuring in the Makeup Monthly is also who I feature in my newsletter. So I send out a monthly beauty newsletter. I talk about new products. I give some reviews in there. I stand out product, indie news, uh, all that fun stuff. And then I always have a, a small interview with another creator in there. It's just about four questions, but I ask them some questions about them, their YouTube channel, their thoughts on the beauty community, different things like that. And that is who then I also put in my next makeup monthly. So my newsletter for it would be October, has not gone out yet. So if you wanted to sign up for that one, I feel like I'm actually getting my makeup monthly up early. That doesn't happen a lot. That doesn't happen a lot. But if you want to sign up for my newsletter, if you haven't yet, if you'd like to see the interview with Jenna as well, I will have that link down below. Again, I only send out one a month. I might be doing two as we get closer to holiday time, kind of focusing on the holiday releases. Uh, but other than that, I don't like spam you and send you a newsletter every day because I totally understand that that can be a little bit annoying. But I will have Jenna's YouTube link down below and also the link to the newsletter if you want to go ahead and sign up for that. And then why don't we go ahead and jump over to my beauty favorites. I feel like so many of us probably saw this coming. I have a new favorite lip color. It's from Dose of Colors. This is in Truffle. Oh my goodness. I picked this up recently from Ulta. I reviewed it already, but I said that, yep, this just became one of my favorite colors. The Dose of Colors Liquid Lipstick Formula is just one of my favorites. I love their liquid lipsticks. It's definitely one of like my top favorite liquid lipstick formula. And so many people have been recommending Truffle to me. I finally went ahead and purchased it from Ulta and it seriously became an instant favorite shade of mine. I took this to Vegas with me because I was like, I cannot be without Truffle for five days. That's just not gonna happen. So this came on my vacation with me. If you haven't tried out Dose of Colors Liquid Lipsticks yet, I highly recommend you do. If you love nudes and you love a bit, just a bit of a deeper nude it's not too deep it's not too brown it's not too anything it's just like the most perfect nude that I love so much I would highly recommend truffle next up I have a mascara and it is always so weird to me when I have favorite mascaras to mention in here because I'm a false lash girl I love my false lashes but every once in a while I find a mascara that I'm like dang I got to be telling everybody about this one this one is from NARS this is the climax mascara I tried this for, I think it was the first time on camera in one of my trying new makeup series that I typically post here on Fridays. And as I was putting it on, I was like, yeah, you know, it's okay. Like, it's all right. And that's, I think sometimes that's a lot of my initial reactions with mascara because I feel like I expect mascara to turn into, you know, false lashes. Like I expect it to look like this after I put mascara on and it never happens. And I don't know why, but I always kind of 
one thing that I do with makeup when I'm realizing what I really enjoy is what I keep reaching for and keep reaching for. I'm not even thinking, what mascara am I wearing today? Oh, I know, I'm wearing the NARS Climax. This, again, came to Vegas with me, and I think that was another indicator of how much I truly enjoy this mascara. Um, but I just kept reaching for it over and over again. I was like, dang, my lashes look so good every time I wear it. No, I don't get extremely long lashes to my eyebrows when I wear this, but I really enjoy how fluffy this makes my lashes. And I feel like if you've been watching my channel for a while, you might have heard me say that a lot. I like fluffy lashes. I like fluffy, I like wispy, that's what I look for in my false lashes, that's what I look for in my mascara, and that's what I get with the NARS Climax. So I've just been really impressed with this one. Again, it does, it does really nice things for volume, also for length, but again, it just kind of like fluffs up the lashes. It makes them just look nicer. Top lashes and bottom lashes. Again, I wore this in Vegas. I didn't wear false lashes every single day in Vegas, especially days that, you know, were a little bit more chill. And especially when we were doing things in the morning slash afternoon, I definitely wasn't wearing false lashes until, you know, 2 a.m. Sometimes later. Thank you, Vegas. Uh, so I was wearing this one and I had zero transfer issues even in the Vegas heat. It was like 98 degrees when we went there. My mascara wasn't moving. So highly recommend this one from NARS. Alrighty, I am trying to chat fast because I'm filming super, super late and uh, we are about to lose the sun. So I'm gonna keep rolling. But next up, I'll just touch on, touch on this one briefly too because I did review it recently. This is from Hourglass. This is the Veil Translucent Setting Powder. I got mine in a mini because I love makeup minis. And this guy is just so so good this is a powder that when i put it on i feel like i actually look more natural i look like i'm wearing less makeup than before i applied this powder it is crazy i don't know what kind of magic is in this little container here but it just does phenomenal things to my skin and i have been enjoying the hourglass veil powder so much Alrighty, so next up i have an eyeshadow palette i feel like you guys might not be surprised to see this one if you caught my trying new makeup with this palette because I could not get over how excited I was. This is from Stelazzi. This is the Stellar Eyeshadow Palette. This is actually a cool toned eyeshadow palette and I am more of a warm toned eyeshadow palette kind of girl. I do not have no shame in admitting that. But this palette, it was kind of interesting because Stelazzi came out with the Stellar palette and then the Spellbound palette. Spellbound is more of a warm tone palette. It kind of reminds me a bit of like the Born to Run palette, the ColourPop Makeup Shayla Perception palette. And when I opened it, I was like, ooh, that looks pretty. And then I opened this and I was like, get on my eyes right now. Don't wait. Just get on them. And I usually do not have those kind of reactions to cool tone palettes. So I was really excited to try it out. I'll link my video where I was testing it out for the first time. And I just could not get over how much I was enjoying this palette. I keep reaching for it. The other day, I finally had to be like, girlfriend, you also have to try the Spellbound palette. I've only been able to try it once though because I keep reaching for this one. So I don't know. I just think that's awesome. The shades in here are just so beautiful to me. I love all these taupes in here. Also, you have some darker colors. You have shimmers. You have mattes. This purple right here, which is called California Girls, was such a unique purple. That is what I put on my eyes in the trying new makeup video, and I was just like, what? So I have been enjoying this one so much. I did get this sent to me from Stelazzi. I am an affiliate with Stelazzi, so I do have an affiliate code with them. It's just Samantha if you want to save any money, but this eyeshadow palette has just been impressing me so, so much. So I definitely wanted to mention that one. I actually have another eyeshadow palette to recommend as well. This is from Carity, and this is the Rosé All Day Eyeshadow Palette. I have been wearing this on my eyes so much recently. I always link all my makeup that I'm wearing in my description box, and it's been so funny to see how many people are commenting about the Rosé All Day because a lot of you guys know that I link my makeup, so I get a lot of comments like, I was trying to guess what was on your eyes, so I went down to look, and so many people were saying like, oh my gosh, I see that you keep wearing this palette. Are you loving it? What's going on? And I'm like, Yes. Yes, I am loving it. For some reason, when I first opened it, I was like, okay, I'm probably going to get along with this palette. But it wasn't one of those that I opened it and was like, yes, I'm going to love this palette. I just thought that I would enjoy it. I did not expect to love it as much as I did. Now, I love these shades. I love the pinks. I love the mauves. I love the, the matte and shimmers that we have in here. I like the nice mirror. But every single eye look that I have done with this palette, I have been like, dang girl, you a makeup artist today. And I do not usually have those thoughts, let me tell you. But this palette, I just enjoy every, truly every single eye look that I have done with this. I have enjoyed it so much. So I would definitely check this one out from Carity because I am super, super impressed with it. 
Okay, I have two more palettes. These are face palettes. These are from Sigma Beauty. I was so excited to see Sigma Beauty come out with face palettes. I was like, yes, please, I'm here for this. Uh, to me, this has been like long overdue. <laughs> They're so shiny that sometimes it's hard with the camera, but I thought this was so long overdue. I really like a lot of Sigma's face products. I've tried bronzers, I've tried blushes, uh, I've tried the highlights from Sigma, and to put it in face palettes, I love face palettes. Like I have a deep love for face palettes. So when I finally saw all these together, I was like, yes, yes, it's happening. And I was just so happy. So they have the highlight and contour palette, which looks like this. I really like the packaging. You have this nice mirror on it also. And then you have six shades inside. So you have three highlights on top and then you have three contour or bronzer shades. I really enjoyed these blushes all so much. So where is it? Cor de Rosa, this one right here. I have that in a single. And I was actually really excited to see it in the palette because I really, really like that blush. I was just really excited to see Sigma come out with face palettes. I feel like this was necessary for them and it had me really excited so I did want to go ahead and mention them. I am also an affiliate with Sigma, my code is Samantha if you are interested, uh, but I'm just, I'm just so impressed and so happy that they came out with these. Alrighty, I just have one more item to mention. There are actually three items, but kind of like in one. But this is from Chrisana Ann Cosmetics. So she recently came out with three new eyeshadow singles. They are called the Graces Collection. And I have been so impressed with these. So there's two of them. So you have a matte red and then more of like a shimmer cranberry and then a shimmer gold also. I will go ahead and swatch these. So you can see them uh, but I've been so happy with these Christina Ann Cosmetics is an indie brand and a fantastic brand I especially adore her single eyeshadows if you are an, a single eyeshadow lover I would highly recommend that you check out her website because they are such good eyeshadows but they are also pretty affordable I also am an affiliate with Christina Ann my discount code is March Beauty you can of course not be using my discount code on any of these and just going to the websites to purchase them but I've just been such a supporter of Chrissy and Anne. She has a YouTube channel and I just think she is one of the nicest people that I like get to chat with. So those are what the three shades look like. You can buy these separately or you can buy them as the Graces Collection and purchase all three. And I've just been so impressed with these. I cannot remember for sure what video it was that I was wearing them in, but I will link it down below. I have an Instagram tutorial with these three so you can see how they apply on the eyes. And this gold, when you, it is so beautiful. So I will have those linked down there. I just have them in a case like this. These are all of the Christina Ann singles that I own right now. And you can also buy these uh, magnetic palettes also on her website and they're like the sparkly ones. So again, I'm just so impressed with her single shadows, but that new collection is fire, especially for fall. It's going to be, I mean, they are just so beautiful. So I highly recommend that you go check them out. But after that, that is going to do it for my beauty favorites. Like I said, I do have some book news to share and I'm super excited about that. But in case you don't, in case you don't want to know about book stuff, I thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that you have a fabulous October. But if you want to get some information on my next novel, I am super excited to say that my next book, which is called The Six Scarlet, it has gone for pre-order for a signed paperback copy on my website. So if you're interested in pre-ordering your copy that would come directly from me, it would be a signed print copy. I will have the link to my website down below. I don't have the specific release date yet for Scarlet. It is still going through the formatting process, meaning that it's getting formatted for the print books, it's getting formatted for the eBooks, and I still have to go through the approval process once that gets all done from the formatter. I still have to go through and look at everything, make sure it's okay, order the print book and all of that. Uh, so I don't have the official release yet. It should still be sometime in October, I believe, unless we run into something like super wrong. But we are in like the final home stretch. So I went ahead and made the pre-orders available on my website. I got so much support for the Six Christie that I ordered what I thought I would have for like book sales and pre-orders and you guys totally exceeded those expectations and I was short on books and I was having to tell people like I just had to make another order from the printer I will get it to you as fast as I can so I just highly suggest if you think that you want to order the signed print copy from me to just go ahead and pre-order it so I can just make one big order from the printer right away so I do not have that happen again because I was completely overwhelmed 
with book sales on Christie, which was such an amazing feeling and thank you guys so much for the continued support on my novels. The Six Scarlet is my seventh novel that I'm releasing. It is the second book in the Six series. So if you haven't read Christie yet, I will have her link down below. Um, she's available on Amazon in print, in paper print and paperback in print and ebook and then also available as an audiobook through Audible. So if you like to listen to audiobooks, I'll have those links down below. But I'm just so excited for Scarlet's story to get out here. I cannot wait to release this one and see what you guys think. I know I I wrote this book in six weeks because of the enthusiasm and the support over Christy and the excitement to read Scarlet's story. So thank you guys so much. I I've never had that happen and like I said I've I wrote six novels before writing Scarlet so thank you for the support again if you're interested in pre-ordering for Scarlet I will have that link down below but I'm so excited that she will be releasing sometime very very soon here but other than that, that is going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing my Makeup Monthly for the month of September. I hope that you have a wonderful October. If you guys did enjoy this video, I hope that you will give it a thumbs up. I hope that you'll also consider subscribing before you go, and I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video.